Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the GBU-57 Bunker Buster, the massive ordnance penetrator from the United States military. Please remember to like and subscribe. Alright, fact 1. Designed for the B-2 bomber. The GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator, or MOP, is the latest iteration of many bunker buster bombs from the United States military. This particular one is designed solely for the B-2 stealth bomber. It is incredibly interesting that this massive bomb is only designed for the B-2. The B-2 is the only plane that's programmed to be able to handle this bomb and drop it precisely. This bomb is so large, typically fighter jets or smaller airplanes would not be able to take off with it because it's simply too heavy. This is definitely a bomb for the bombers that are in the United States military. During the testing phase, the B-52 was used to drop this bomb. However, in comeback and production usage, this bomb is only programmed and designed for the B-2 stealth bomber. The most advanced aircraft carrying the most advanced bunker buster seems like a natural fit to me. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 2. 30,000 pounds or 13,000 kilograms. As I mentioned in the previous section, this is a massive bomb. I'm mostly talking about the weight. As you know, for aircrafts, weight is extremely important. If something's too heavy, the aircraft simply cannot take off. So for the military to design a bomb of this weight and this magnitude, they need to make sure that the aircraft is able to handle it. Another very, very interesting fact about this bomb is that despite its massive weight at 30,000 pounds or 13,000 kilograms, the actual warhead is not that big. The actual warhead is only about 6,000 pounds. Most of the weight of this bomb is directly from the hardened steel casing and also the bunker penetrating capabilities that it has. We'll get into the sections later, but the bomb is designed to penetrate into a deep bunker and then explode. It is not designed to hit and explode on impact on ground. And therefore, the warhead is not that large because the bomb is designed so heavy that it sinks through the bunker all the way deep underground and then explode. That is why the bomb is so massive in terms of weight. There are no other bombs that come even close in terms of its weight. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 3, up to 200 feet deep or 60 meters. This bunker buster is designed to penetrate any bunker that is up to 200 feet or 60 meters below the ground. If the bunker is too deep underground or too deep inside a mountain, this bomb is not going to be able to hit its necessary targets. And so you can say that it is a limitation of this weapon. Despite the fact that they are using the most advanced aircraft with the advanced technologies associated with the bomb. Unfortunately, if the enemy builds a deeper bunker, for example deep into a mountain through tunneling and so forth, this bomb won't be able to do much. This bomb is also GPS guided so that it can carry it to the right location. Also because of its weight and also sheer size, a typical B2 can only hold two of them. In the video you see here, the bomb is able to penetrate deep into the underground and then explode. As you can see in the delay, it first penetrates deep underground, as I mentioned, up to 200 feet. And then the smallish warhead, compared to the size of the bomb that is, explodes. Keep in mind, a 6,000 pound warhead is not small. However, because the whole bomb is 30,000 pounds, it is relatively small compared to size. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 4, not high yield. Another common mix obsession about this bomb is with the mother of all bombs or the MOAB that the US military has. The MOAB is considered the largest non-nuclear yield weapon, meaning that its explosive power is only second to nuclear explosions. The MOAB is absolutely a large bomb with a very large warhead and explosive capability. 
In contrast, the GPU57 has a small warhead, and most of it is in terms of the weight of the bomb in order to penetrate deep underground. The MOAB, on the other hand, is designed to explode right on impact and produce a very large explosion, and as I mentioned, only second to nuclear explosions and the largest for conventional warheads. Alright, let's get to the next and final fact, hardened by steel alloy. So, how can the massive ordnance penetrator be a bunker buster? Well, to ensure the bomb doesn't explode right on impact, the bomb is encased with very hard steel alloy so that once it drops from the air and hits the ground, it is able to stay intact and continue penetrating deep underground until it hitting its target and explode. You can imagine the layers of hardened steel that is required to encase this bomb. I think part of the reason why the bomb is so heavy is because of all this encased closure and enclosure protection. As opposed to other type of weapons such as missiles, you probably want light composite alloy on the casing because you want the missile to travel as fast as possible and hit its target. Versus this bomb was designed to first penetrate underground as much as possible and then explode. So you can think about it in your mind that this bomb is more like a very large hardened steel alloy casing and within the casing a 6,000 pound warhead. Contrasted to other types of weapons where the shell of the bomb is typically some kind of fiberglass, composite alloy, or some kind of light material. Alright, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.